So are these the same ones YG was eating? Yeah. Slightly different on the sauces, but. All right, YG, I respect you too, fool. Hey, what's going on everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today we're joined by Schoolboy Q. The greatest. <laughs> He's a five-time Grammy-nominated, platinum-selling artist. Every album he drops is a marquee event in hip-hop, and his most recent release, Crash Talk, is no different. Schoolboy Q, welcome to the show. What up, bro? What up? How are you with spicy food? Do you crank Man, it? Man, I love spicy food. I, I prefer spicy food all the time, but, you know, when they prepped me before this, they made it seem like this was, like, a normal spicy, so I'm a little nervous right now. In your head a little bit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you feel it? So back in 2016, you famously trolled fans by releasing a version of the Blank Face album art with the yeah. Crying Jordan meme on it. Yeah. And then even your most recent video for Num Num Juice, it has these deep cut internet references like Elon Musk hitting the joint on the yeah. Joe Rogan podcast. I use the internet for funny things. Like a lot of people grieve on the internet. A lot of people like, uh, you know, look for sad things and try to do motivational things on the internet. And I'm just not really here for that. Like I deal with all that in real life. So for the most part, I'm just looking for funny stuff, dude. If it's not funny, I'm just scrolling right by it. And then what about when you drop a project? Like, do you care what people are saying about it online or do you block out the Twitter chat? I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't check comments because it's always bad. You, you get good, you get good comments, obviously. Yeah, you get a, a more good than bad, but you, for some reason you only focus on the bad ones. Those are the ones you remember. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I'm not here for the slander and all that. I'm cool on that. Sauce Bay. Mm hmm Yeah. <laughs> you like that one? Yeah. That sound like me. <laughs> it's straight. This shit ain't even hot. So as I understand it, you've been working on your golf game almost daily, falling in love with the sport on accident, taking a bet from a friend who said you couldn't hit a birdie. Mm -hmm. What would you say has been your crowning golf achievement so far? Getting that birdie. <laughs> <laughs> Getting that birdie, I won 10 grand off of it. Um, but for the most part, uh, playing golf got me out of like depression and stuff. Cause like, sometimes you can be depressed and don't know you're depressed. Cause you're just going through the motions of life. I mean, I was the guy that I didn't like to take pictures with fans and stuff. I mean, I would do it, but for the most part, it was like an attitude or I was just like, oh my God, like I always walk everywhere I go with my hoodie on and my head down. Just in a, a dark space where you just, it's just not good. It's not healthy to raise kids that way. And last year I went and found golf. My ideas started flowing better. My, my moods started flowing better. I became a better parent. I just smile, I smile way more. You know, I stopped being just this depressed, want to stay in the house, hide all day. And then like hip hop, golf has a lingo and an etiquette that's all its own. So what I want to do is hit you with some golf slang. Mm -hmm. And if you know what it means, maybe you can explain it to the people watching. And if you don't know what it means, maybe just take a guess, okay? All right, yeah, I'm gonna be honest. Most of my homies ain't really into all that, but um, I may know some things. <laughs> yeah, maybe you pick some <laughs> let's stuff see, up. Let's see, maybe, let's see. Have you ever heard of a fried egg? Oh yeah, Friday, that's when it's in the bunker and um, the ball is like surrounded in this little island of sand, kind of. Yeah. Ding, 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 ding. What's a duffer or a hacker? Ah, uh, me. <laughs> <laughs> me, basically. I duff a lot, dude, because I have the bad problem of, I used to play baseball, I used to be really good at baseball, so um, I have a bad habit when I play golf. I lean back a lot. What about a chili dip? Have you ever heard of a chili dip? Yeah, man, these some real white motherfuckers that invented this shit, dog. I don't know none of that. Chili dip? I think it's like when you take out some grass before you hit the ball. That's pretty much Chili dip on it. Oh, yeah, that's like a duck, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you know what cabbage is? Nah, I not smoke cabbage. <laughs> that's about it. We smoke a whole lot of that shit on the court. A whole lot of that shit. 
right, so up next, Shaquanda's hot pepper Shaquanda's, sauce. Shaquanda's, our little ghetto ass. Let's see what our little ghetto ass is talking about. I fuck with Shaquanda. So far, so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She ain't from the projects, though. <laughs> So you get a lot of love in the rap community, not only because of the artistry and realness that you bring to the music, but also for being one of the funniest guys behind the scenes. Yeah. And then you had some hilarious segments with Pete Holmes back when he had yeah, his talk show. Yeah, my boy Pete. And he remembered those moments very fondly when he was on Hot Ones, but he yeah. did make the point that rappers are always burdened with this having to be cool all the time. Yeah. Rappers take away their funny side by trying to be a rapper. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like. Like you see rappers, like the whole thing is just like a, a thing. It's like a, it's like a rapper kit, like a bunch of chains and like, oh yeah, you know, as soon as the camera go on, they go right in the mode. Oh, you see what's going on, you lame ass nigga. Fuck you niggas. You niggas ain't getting no money, bro. Like everybody getting money, dog. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you know, that's just rappers trying to be that thing and not being they self. I'm more so being myself. I know a lot of rappers are funny. They just won't be they self. Yeah, this shit easy call. No problem. Easy. Oh, good, though. So before the Billboard hits and the Platinum Records, I know that you had dreams of being a scholarship athlete, and to mm -hmm. this day, still follow things like the UFC and college basketball very closely. Love it. UFC, boxing, college basketball, I love it. And then two-time MVP Mike Trout for a while, Man of the Year, was his walk-up song. Yeah, and you know I'm a diehard Angel fan. Yeah, did you get a chance to meet him when you threw out the first pitch at the nah, Angel team man, last year? I'm mad, dude. I wanted to see him, meet him, you know what I mean? But it didn't work out. Do you have a suggestion for the new walk-up song that he should do? Gotta go none them dudes. You gotta turn up. Two door cool, hop it down like Jack in the Pop. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. But that might be a little too much before you can. <laughs> yeah, come on, yeah, that's bitch shit. <laughs> Yeah, right before you can die. You gotta come with something else, man. Is it still fuck the Dodgers? Fuck the Dodgers, for sure. Fuck the Dodgers. Everybody I know is Dodger fans. Mm. I grew up in LA, LA, you know what I mean? So everybody I know is Dodger fans, and it's like, they don't let you breathe. Like, as soon as they find out you're an Angel fan, it's like, what? How you are you? Yeah, hey, bruh, so I've been hearing it my whole life. They weak ass, they get to the championship, they good every year and don't do shit. <laughs> Still ain't won since I was fucking born. What, 86? I was born in 86. Motherfucker 20 years old talking about the Dodgers this, Dodgers that. Bitch, you never saw anything. You never saw nothing. Like, you niggas be hitting me up. They be up my comments, all that. So I be like, bro, I got, nobody got time for that. Bro. This is Dodgers shit, fuck the Dodgers. I know that you've been to some PGA Tour events. Do you have an opinion on these fans that scream things like Baba Booey or Mashed Potatoes? I'm one of the, the, the <laughs> niggas that's screaming and shit, so I fuck with them. They're my homies. Tony Fida, we was playing. That was my partner in the uh, Genesis. Yeah. Open and um, I just kept saying drippy. You know, that's my whole thing. When I hit a good shot, ooh, that's drippy. You know, that dripping right now or whatever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He said it at the uh, Masters thing. And he was like, uh, I put it such and such or something, a chip or something. He was like, yeah, and I just dripped it in. I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm rubbing off on you, man. You know what I mean? So yeah, I, I fuck with it. I fuck with the hecklers and shit. As long as they don't do it in the middle of your backswing, but right after you hit it, yeah, yeah. Fair game. I love that. Los Calientes. Yeah, I'm gonna spice that in this motherfucker. They talking all this old crying shit. It's coming. All right. I'll remember you said this. <laughs> all right. So typically on Wing 5, we do this thing called Explain That Gram, but it makes no sense for you because you have this habit of completely washing and deleting all the pictures off your Instagram from time to time. Mm -hmm. So we're going to call an audible and take it back to a 2014 interview you did with Power 106 where you described yourself as a boring person who sits around playing video games. And one of our favorite things to talk about on Hot Ones is celebrity gamers and whether oh, or not so they talk they trash talk teenagers over the headset. Oh yeah, I'm going in. Do you remember the last time you snapped on the PlayStation Network? Uh, every day. There's no, do I remember? I did it today, yesterday, the day before yesterday. I'm gonna tell you this, I did it tomorrow too. You get what I'm saying? Like, I do it every day. It's, you better not, if once I see your mic pop up on the side, hey, you bitch ass nigga, hey, what you talking about? Hey, 
As soon as I, it's over, I'm going right in on you. Do you ever get recognized? Yeah, I hear people, bro, because my name is Schoolboy Q or my gang, but it spells like way different. But you can kind of tell it's spelled Schoolboy Q. A lot of people are like, Schoolboy Q sucks, dude. Like, who would name himself after Schoolboy Q? You're trash. Like, he's washed up, dude. Who listens to Schoolboy Q? <laughs> <laughs> I once heard a story about Lil Yachty and 21 Savage playing NBA 2K for $12,000 a game. Have you dabbled in the world of high stakes gaming? Nah, that's silly. I ain't even throwing all that old silly ass shit. I don't know what type of money them niggas getting, but I ain't getting no where I'm just betting 12000 every time I play the game. Like, nah. Especially if doing it. I ain't damn sure I ain't doing that shit for Instagram. Right. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> what the fuck? Like, Have you picked a side in the great Fortnite versus Apex Legends debate? Apex. Yeah. Fortnite was dope when it first came out. I was fucking with it. I was going in. But then they started making it weak kid-friendly, you know what I mean? Like, once a game gets so big, they have no choice but to cater to the weaker mm. side of it. Because not too many people are good. You know, it's a small percentage of people that are good versus people that are just playing. So, as of right now, Apex is shitting on um, Fortnite. But Apex is growing just rapidly, crazy, crazy. It's going to be just as big as Fortnite, and they're going to have to cater to a bunch of weak-ass, little-ass, punk-ass kids. <laughs> And, and I'm going to be right back at Cold Faithful Call of Duty. It's going to be the same. It's always shit. there for you. Yeah, yeah. always there. Old Faithful. Help, I hate you. So you've said that you're not into nerdy spaceship rap or Pokemon bars, a purist who thinks that your lyrics should reflect your life. And then of course a challenge of that is eventually as a rapper, you'll become a dad who plays golf and then shops at Whole Foods. Yeah. Do you ever think about that? Like, are you interested in how MCs like Jay-Z or Nas have had to find ways to rap about post-success life in a compelling way? Oh yeah, that Pokemon shit, dog. Can't stand that old rapping ass shit, dog. It Rapping super fast, and you know, it's like I'm gonna always give you everything. Bow, bow, bow. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have some for my white folks. I'm gonna have some for my ghetto niggas. I'm gonna have some for my radio people. I'm gonna have some for everybody, bro. Cause as an artist, I think that's what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to just cater to one fan base. You know, like I'll be a fool to just sit there and make a bunch of songs like Blessed or John Muir. You know, so I love the balance of music, and all that, so I really don't care about all that other shit. And then another way that you're unique is that you don't just flood the music marketplace with songs. You seem yeah. to come out with these fully crafted albums. Do you have an idea of the Schoolboy Q story? Like, is that already plotted out, or is every album, every project, like a fresh start? Um, I had a whole thing mapped out. It worked out good up until the second album. <laughs> So the first two albums were planned out, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to name it this, I'm going to add this, it's going to be this. After that, it was just like, life hits you different, things happen, your mood changes. And my whole thing now with music is making sure this album don't sound like that album. That's why I always do like two albums before I actually finalize the album. And they're always pretty trash. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think it's the one, I get on Twitter or something, oh, album coming soon. You're right. That was the first album. To go back on Twitter, oh, I'm coming soon. That was the second album. Then I finally figure it out. <laughs> and the motherfucker be three, two years later. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, this one look a little, little shysty. Yeah. I ain't gonna even lie. I ain't going to lie to you. Mm. Yeah. Now, 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 okay. It's happening. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> For real. So you've been pretty open about some of the struggles in your life that affected your ability to be a good father, but now it's such an amazing thing to see the relationship that you have with your daughter Joy, you guys on the red carpet together at the Grammys and the matching girl power hoodies. But I did see an amazing video on your Snapchat where she called your rapping trash and she called TDE trash. <laughs> like I feel like if you're dealing with that kind of savagery from your own kin, you can handle anything. Yeah, I, I think I get it from a mama. You know, her friends come over, you just hear nothing but laughing. 
all day. <laughs> they just popping shit. And since a kid, my mom used to pop shit at me. That's why I am with my daughter too. Like I talk shit to her all day. And she talks shit to me all day and I wouldn't want it no other way. You know what I mean? Right. Don't ever tell me I look nice walking out the house. You know what I mean? Never. She's like, oh, you look horrible. You look stupid. All that tight ass shirt, like my own daughter, you know? Like, I need all that love. Mm -hmm. I need that love, not the other love. Write this shit down. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll do some lifting for nah, you. Fuck. So I know that you've chilled on the bucket hat since it's gone mainstream, but it's impossible to deny your influence in the style trend, your roots in it. What makes the bucket hat a good go to for huskier boys? You've got a fat ass face, first of all. Let's just let that record reflect. So you put on a regular cap. Put on a regular cap. Your fat ass face gonna look fatter with that little ass cap on. <clears throat> so, put a bucket hat on. I'm gonna play a little game called Who Wore It Better and pull out some iconic bucket hat moments in pop Ooh. culture history. And you just tell me who rocks it better, okay? All right. Who rocked it better on the golf course, Bill Murray or Kevin James? Me. Bill Murray. Who rocked it better on the red carpet? We have Justin Timberlake and then Buckethead, who's literally Justin wearing Timberlake. a bucket on his head. Justin Timberlake. And then finally, who wore it better on stage, Schoolboy Q or Billie Eilish? Billie Eilish is doing way too much, me. Whoa. Is this the spice you've been looking for? Mm-hmm. Spice at this motherfucker. Spice at this motherfucker. Spice at this motherfucker. Woo! Fucker Buzz might got the game fucked up. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I respect you. Thank you, that means a lot to me. I respect you. So are these the same ones YG was eating? Yeah. Slightly different on the sauces, but. Hey right, YG, I respect you too, fool. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna take a real little bite. Yeah. And you sit here and you in it. Come on. <laughs> Ice cream coming in. Ice cream coming in. What type of weirdo are you growing up, dog? <laughs> what type of nigga is you? So, here at First We Feast, we're obsessed with what our guests eat. So now seems like as good a time as any to shout out your favorite restaurant. The Shabu Shabu House between oh, yeah. San Shabu Pedro Shabu, and Central in downtown Los Angeles. Mariamo, man, you the greatest of all time. Don't you ever come to this motherfucker, though. Do rappers have their own secret network of restaurant reservations? Like, if you land in New York, no. do you hit up Action to see where you should meet? <laughs> <laughs> oh! Cool ass ice cream. 
And then some rappers like Wale and Vince Staples, they've started Yelp accounts where they actually review restaurants. Would that be something that would ever interest you? Wale and Vince are two weirdo ass <laughs> motherfuckers. They came here too? They both came here, yeah. Fucking weirdos. All right, schoolboy, this is the last dab. We call it the last dab because it's tradition around here to put a little extra on the last wing. You don't have to if you don't want Dude, to. You crazy. You don't have to if you don't want to. I'm not. Man. Hang on. Have any of y'all tried this shit? <laughs> it's an initiation for the crew, you know. Oh. That's too hot. <laughs> That's good. That's good. God damn. Yeah. I'm not I'm not like putting extras on this shit or nothing. That shit is hot. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck that. Fuck the bomb. I don't give a fuck if y'all investing in it or what. Fuck that shit. That shit fucked up. We are not, we are not. And that's a great segue for what's going down in Wing 10. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like how he just stare at me to see what's about to happen. <laughs> All right, Schoolboy Q, here we are at the top of Spice Mountain, a hallowed ground where only a few people have ever stood before. And now that you have these wings, these hot sauces running through you, bringing your blood to a boil, it's time to bring some of that schoolboy Q realness to the hot sauce lineup in front of us today. And let's start hot. with the bomb. Hot. Trinidad Scorpion. I could fuck with them because it's hot, but it's not too crazy. Right. Hot, but it's hot. What about the Hellfire Detroit? That's good. It's real good. The Los Calientes? Good. What about Shaquanda? What the fake project bit. <laughs> yeah, that's just straight. Do you have a favorite on the lineup? Probably these two. Sauce Bay and the Detroit Hellfire. And look at you, Schoolboy Q. Starting at the handle, looking for the heat, finding it, and then getting on top of it to clear the board. Now there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you, my friend. This camera, this camera, this camera. Let the people know what you have going on in your life. Like, I don't drink so much water and shit. And, and try to flip. I'm full as fuck, too. Like, so my stomach is, like, hurting from drinking. And you get what I'm saying? Like, I got you. I got an album out. Oh, bruh. Crash talk. All platforms. <laughs> I'm going home. For real. All right, good job. Good job, man. I know, I know. Oh my God. Y'all done fucked my whole high up and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I was off edibles and shit. I don't even know if I'm even hot. I'm not, I don't even feel that shit no more. Hot ones fucking up highs. Fucking my high up, dude. What's up, Spice Lords? OG Camera Guy Bill here, ready to spit some fire for you. Summer 2019. Los Calientes está bien. I like to eat it with my friends. In the sunshine, it is the best. Putting my taste buds to the test. The heat really burns just like my skin. Eat 
some more. It's not a sin. Pour it on top of all your food. People walking by saying, who's that cool dude? It's Los Calientes. It's all set the summer. Go to heatness.com. Don't be a bummer, said it's Los Calientes. It's all set the summer. Go to heatness.com. Don't be a bummer. What it is, summer 2019. Sauce of the summer, Los Calientes. In fuego. Bill, get the hell out of my seat. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Los Calientes.